The top 10 contemporary art exhibitions in New York City last year, part two. The five coolest things that could actually fit on my wall. My name is David. I'm founder of The 2%. If you're new, please give it a subscribe and a thumbs up and make sure you're following me on Instagram for awesome daily cool content. Kicking this off though. Stephen Wilkes at the Bryce Wolkowitz Gallery last September. Stephen's photographs, I'm going to show you an earlier one to explain. Um, he photographs over 1,500 images of the exact same spot over a period of 15 to 30 hours. And then he spends months editing them all together into kind of a a blend that takes you from day to night, capturing his favorite moments from the day in the exact spot and time where they occurred. And this new show, he's expanding throughout the world. And this is unbelievable. The Serengeti National Park, uh, all of this happened in one day. Grizzly bears in British Columbia and the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. But his newest work in the show is also the longest duration he's ever done taking photographs. So this is 36 hours of photographing. He's in Greenland uh, above the Arctic Circle or in the Arctic Circle. I'm not sure what the grammar is, but the point is uh, it's, it's 24 hours of daylight. So there is no night here. It's 36 hours of daytime capturing one of the most significant ice melts in history. There's a TED talk that Stephen gave, which is short and phenomenal. So this is a typical day, 12 to 18 hours nonstop, capturing the entire day unfold. The link is in the description. Vic Moon is at Sycamore Jenkins Gallery in October, literally recreated objects from their own ashes. So in 2018, the National Museum in Brazil burned to the ground, destroying not just artworks, but really important scientific fossils and, and specimens, including the oldest human skull in the Americas. And Vic was very fond of that museum, had visited many times with his kids, and so he was able to work with the archaeologists and the scientists who were going through the damage to obtain ashes from specific parts of the museum. And then he would sprinkle those ashes to create representations of the objects lost out of the ashes that were in that spot, taking it to a level of 3D printing some of those objects out of the ashes in the area where they were destroyed. Because for the most important objects, they had previously been 3D laser scanned. And so they had those files and he just took the files, reprinted them from the ashes or the things in that spot, literally rebirthing a thing from its own destruction. Meanwhile, Jessica Eaton at Higher Pictures Uptown, also in October. These are the, the most complex multiple exposure photographs I've ever seen. I'm going to do my best to explain, but you're going to have to watch a, a short video documentary of her doing it. It's phenomenal. I'll put the link below for this whole thing. You have to watch it. What she's doing is photographing gray boxes of various sizes and various uh, levels of gray, right? She's photographing them one at a time. So when she's photographing a gray box, she's putting a color film on her camera so that she can make that gray thing whatever color she wants in the camera. And then she repeats that over and over again. She changes the box, changes the film, changes the box, changes the film, all on the same piece of film. It's a 100% analog, no Photoshop process where she's building a particular object and a particular combination of layered colors and light on the film itself. You will see, by the way, in this, in this little documentary, the extent of math and planning that goes into this. It's an extreme level of calculation to understand how many seconds, what color of gray, what size, what order you do things to create whatever image she wants in the end. Mary Ellen Bartley at Yancey Richardson Gallery has two parts. Part one uh, are beautiful, colorful books. She went to the cheap used bookstore in New York City and got the cheapest books from the 48 cent bin and ripped off the covers and then arranged them into these absolute beautiful still lives. And what gets me about them is that we've all arranged books. Do you know what I'm saying? 
And it takes this artist's eye and this artist's camera to capture these on a level, which brings me to part two. In during COVID and quarantine, like the rest of us, she was she was stuck in her home and she wanted to create a challenge for herself to make work. And so she made this series during the month of April called Seven Things Again and Again. There's a short documentary of her explaining this one. Again, so many cool links in the description. Spend some time going through them. But uh, she picked seven objects that she had on hand. She couldn't go out and buy anything. Seven things in her home and arrange them differently every single day for 30 days. So in the beginning, you have day one and day two and day three. But as you get to like the 10th and 11th, she starts getting very creative with how she's using the book pages as a veil until the 18th of the month where she starts taking a photograph, ripping up the photograph and rearranging it. And to kind of bookend the series, this is the last photograph in the series where she took a photograph and then she took a photograph of that photograph. And here's something I just, I just caught, by the way. Each of these photographs is in an edition of seven. So not only is she using seven objects for 30 days, but she's creating seven objects, seven photographs every single day. And finally, Robert Irwin at the Pace Gallery. I'm gonna catch you up to Robert Irwin. Uh, so he's famous for doing these light bulb sculptures. So this is one of his earlier sculptures and uh, he put colored gels around the fluorescent light tubes to give them different colors. He's 91 years old and in his newest show, the kind of breakthrough revelation is that nothing is turned on. Like none of the lights are even plugged in. They're never meant to be turned on. It's a celebration of light bulbs when they're off. And so the same colored gels, some of them have electrical tape on them, are such incredibly beautiful, colorful wall sculptures that it has changed my understanding of light bulbs when they're off. There's so many artists who use neon or, or light bulbs in their works now. And it's always this issue of like, but what when at night when you turn them off, is the artwork dead? Is it ugly? And Robert Irwin has kind of turned it on its head to, to consider the light bulb without electricity as a unique, beautiful object with specific qualities that nothing else on the earth has. I hope that was fun. Please subscribe to this so you get future content. Daily content is on Instagram, so make sure you're following there. Thank you so much. I'd love to hear from you, so please comment. Please give it a thumbs up, and I hope to see you soon.